Hi, I'm Andrew with Vata, and today I wanna to go over a couple of our ultrasound models that we have. Um, a couple of things I wanna focus on today is just kinda of showing you two of the different models, the differences between the two, so the vein configuration on each one of those, show you how they can be used, tell you a little bit about maybe how some of our customers use them, and then I'll answer some of the frequently asked questions that we get about the models, including care and, and longevity and things like that. So, so starting out, we have a few different models. I don't have all of them here, but this is gonna be pretty consistent across all of the ultrasound models, at least the ones for vascular access. So we have here our 705 and our 707 vascular access phantoms. Um, both of these are gonna be the same material, same everything with the exception of the vein configuration. So uh, one thing is on the cover of both of them, you're gonna see a little uh, kind of like a see-through diagram a transparent shot of what the product is. That's gonna show you the vein layout in each one. So you can see on the 705 here, it has three different veins. It has a small and a large vein, and then it has a third vein, which is kind of a medium-sized vein that does bifurcate into two smaller vessels. And then on the 707, same type of image right here. This one has four veins with one of them bifurcating into two veins. So, um, one of the things you can do on the models is on the end of them, there's gonna be little dots. And on this one here, the 705, you'll see those three dots right there. And then if I take the 707 out, let's see here, yeah, on this side. So on this side here, you'll see four different dots on the end. Those dots are gonna represent the center of each one of the vessels. So on the 707, you can see here, that one there, I believe, goes to the bifurcated vein. So it's gonna be a single there. That vein is gonna bifurcate in, in the center somewhere. We'll go over that in just a little bit. And then the same thing on the 705, you've got the, that's gonna be the smaller vessel, the larger vessel down on this side. And then in the middle here, this is gonna be the bifurcated vein. So again, that's gonna have dead center of each one of those vessels. So it shows you not only where they are, the depth of them, but it also is helpful uh, when we get a little bit long, uh, later into this talk and we start going about the care about each one of these products. So with these models, um, different vein configuration is obviously gonna be one of the things that you wanna keep in mind when you're looking at which one you wanna order. It does come in light and dark skin. Um, and then after you have the model, it's kind of the thing of what are you gonna use the model for? So what we're seeing people using these for is, as ultrasound is becoming more and more accessible to people, it used to be that the machines were very expensive, they were larger machines, harder to transport around, but now you're seeing a lot of ultrasound machines that are at a much lower price point. Some of them you can just fit in your pocket and walk around. So now nurses and other staff are being able to have these at the patient bedside and use them when they, when they need to. And they're able to use them for things like starting an IV. So that's what this model is really geared towards. It's that nurse that has never used ultrasound before and is maybe gonna be starting to use it or wants to look at using it. And how do you do it? So with the model, um, we have our ultrasound machine set up right here. This is gonna be one of those lower price point machines that they are great for accessing. Let's go ahead and do the 705. So we'll put some ultrasound gel on it. So you're gonna use this just like you would with a actual patient. There's not gonna be any difference. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at each one of these vessels so you guys can kind of see what they look like. So as I go on the end here, uh, I am gonna have my, that is gonna be my smaller vein that is more superficial. So the top of the vein is about a half a centimeter down center of the vein, maybe close to three quarters of a centimeter down, so seven millimeters. So that's the vein. So the first thing you can do is, how do I just find veins on there? How do I image that? And as we go across here, we're gonna see our bifurcated vein. And then on the far side over here, we're gonna see our larger, deeper vein. So the first thing again, how do you just move the probe around? How do you adjust the settings on whatever system you're gonna be using? All of those things that for anyone that's never used ultrasound, it's kind of confusing and can be kind of tricky to figure out. After you found your vein, how do you actually image up and down the vessel? So as we find this large one here, just because it's easier to see, I can just go up and down. And again, it's just how do you image that whole thing and trying to keep it exactly center as you're moving up and down the vein. Now, as we go back to this center vein here, this is gonna be our bifurcated vein. So there we can see it's a, it's a medium sized vein. It's a little bit smaller than our large vein, it's bigger than our small vein. And as we move this way, 
It's a single vein, and as I move back towards myself, you're gonna see right there how it starts to split, and it becomes two separate vessels that will continue to separate until they kind of stop right around there, and then they'll stay around the same distance as they continue to move to, towards the end of the path. And on the far side over here, again, we have that small vessel. That again, as we image it this way, nothing's gonna change. It's gonna stay very consistent in its depth and its size. So that's just a great thing for people to practice. How do you move your probe up and down? How do you look at the vessel? And then even how do you take your probe and then turn your probe sideways so you can look at it in that transverse view? I'm gonna try to get it, there we go. So how do you do that? And then again, how do you move up and down the vessel that way? So just that hand-eye coordination, it's extremely tricky for some people. Some people pick it up naturally, but a lot of people that we see and a lot of people I've talked to, they say as they're training on ultrasound, that can be really tricky. And it's nice for them to just practice. And that's certainly something you can do on the model. You could also do that on your own arm or somebody else's arm as you're not gonna do any damage to anyone. It's just imaging. But the next thing you're gonna wanna be able to do is actually practice accessing that vessel. So whether you're practicing with the intent of starting an IV this way, or even looking at this, it's the same process if you're gonna be starting a pick line, if you're gonna be putting a jugular line in, it's really finding that target and then getting the needle tipped where you want it to be inside of that vein or vessel. So for that one here, we'll go ahead and we'll access the small vein here. Um, so I'm gonna grab a shorter needle. I'm gonna try to get this to where it shows up on the screen. So again, right there, we have found our, our vessel. Um, we know exactly where it's at. And again, how do you get the vessel lined up in the right lo location on the screen relative to the probe, relative to where your needle's gonna go in? So let's see if I can. So as you go in, again, if you're somebody that's training, you're able to go through every single one of the steps as far as how do you do this? Oh, see, I went right through the back wall of it, so I'm gonna come back out. Right there, I can see my needle. So I can actually change to this view, which will be a little bit better. And right there, I can see, if I get the view correct, I can actually see my needle inside the vessel there. right center there. there we go so it's just the ability to practice um, that wasn't the world's greatest access there but what is nice is that um, if I was somebody that knew how to train I could go through the process point out all the little tips and tricks each one of the steps how you want to find your needle point and follow it all the way in how you can look at that needle as it enters the vein from the different angles um, anything else that you want to do how do you select the proper needle length if I'm accessing the vein I did, I could do something quite short or shorter, I guess. And if I'm gonna be accessing this one over here where the center of our, our vessel is about a centimeter and a half down, um, I might have to find a much larger needle. This one wouldn't be long enough. So how do I select the right length or the right diameter, the right gauge of needle to access? So what's nice is again, if you're the trainer, you can go through, show somebody how to do it correctly. And then just like any of our other models or any of the other simulation models out there, What's really nice is the fact that the person that's learning is able to sit there and they're able to practice as long as they need to, whether that's a couple of accesses if they're just brushing up on their skills, or maybe they need to access 30, 40, 50 times to feel comfortable going from smaller vessels, larger vessels, more superficial vessels to deeper vessels. Practicing all those different techniques, getting the hand-eye coordination correct, learning all of the, the buttons and how do I change things, how do I change the depth that my ultrasound is looking at? How do I change the gain to maybe make it easier to see? Um, if I have the ability to add grid lines or some of the needle tracking on some of these new systems, how do you use that and is that something that I want to use? So you're able to go through and practice it over and over and over again and really get the muscle memory down, get the skills down, and also just become more confident in your ability to access using ultrasound, given that it's such a great tool and it's something that's definitely not going anywhere. Um, so, like I said, this one here, it's got the three veins. This one over here, it's got the four veins. So we will look at this one really quick. I won't access on this one. Um, so I'm definitely not an expert on accessing. But on this one here, so as we look on this side over here, we're actually gonna look right, right in 
there we're gonna see our deep vein. So that one is quite a bit deeper than on the other model. That's a smaller vessel. It's about two, two and a half centimeters down. We come across, that's gonna be our bifurcated vein there. Again, you can see it coming closer together to the point where it will join right there. And then as we continue to go across, we're gonna have a smaller vessel that's a little bit more superficial, maybe it, uh, just under a centimeter to that one. And so with all of those different vessels, you just get the different ability. Those ones there again, smaller. So what size needle, what length needle, all of those different things that you're gonna really need to figure out. Um, as far as questions we get on this, uh, how long will the model last? What size needle to use? Those types of questions kind of go hand in hand. So we recommend using a 20 gauge needle or smaller. Um, we do have people that have used or want to use smaller needles. I talked to a customer last week. They want to use a 16 or 17 gauge. I said, you're more than welcome to use that, but it will break down the material and it will shorten the life of the model. I don't know by how much, but it definitely won't last as long. With a 20 gauge needle or a 22 gauge needle, this model should last for thousands of accesses. We don't have a firm number just because it's different based off of how you're accessing. Um, and we found there's too much of a variation there, but it is thousands. We have companies that use these and some of their reps can get a model to last longer than a year. And that's with using it three to five days a week. So you can get a lot of use out of it. Um, care of the model, uh, the biggest thing other than how many sticks that people ask is gonna be how do I refill it or my ultrasound image isn't as good as it once was. What's gonna happen is after you access it a whole bunch of times. So when we accessed it here, just a little bit of blood came out. That's not gonna affect anything. But if you do that a hundred times, that's gonna be quite a bit of fluid coming out of whatever vessel you're accessing. And without that fluid in there, the ultrasound imaging will not work. You're gonna get a blurred image and it's not gonna show up as a vessel. So when that happens, what you're gonna to wanna to do is refill it. We do have an instructional video that goes through that step-by-step, step, but basically these three dots, like I said before, those ones um, are dead center on the vessel. You're gonna to wanna to find the dead center there and you're gonna use that to refill the vessel. Again, that video will be on the product page. That'll be um, at the end of our video here, kind of how to get back to that product page. But go through that anytime you have a problem with the image quality not being what it was, it's typically that you just need to refill the vessels. The model does come with a little um, uh, bottle of the blood and that's gonna help you refill it and that should last for quite a while. Um, other thing is gonna be care. What do I do with my model? How do I keep it clean? How do I make sure that it lasts as long as possible? Two big things. First one's gonna be the cleaning of it. So when you're done, we've got this ultrasound gel all over it. Um, it is way easier to clean this gel off when it's still wet. If it dries overnight, it comes off still pretty easily, but it is a lot more scrubbing and it's a lot more difficult. So wipe it down really well. If it is dirty, isopropyl alcohol or using soap and water, that's gonna clean the model really well. Let it dry completely so that it's completely dry. There's no moisture on it. And then you can apply a little bit of baby powder. That's just gonna keep the, soft, um, the surface soft and it's gonna prevent it from having a slight sticky feel to it. Won't be bad, but it's just gonna have it, give it a better feel. Um, so do that. The other thing is gonna be, is when you're done, it's cleaned, it's been re-baby powdered, and you're gonna be storing it. Store it at room temperature or as close, close to room temperature as possible. Um, the material that these are made out of, it is a great ultrasound material. It's very soft, it has a great image. Um, the needle drag is great on them. But the one negative is it does not handle elevated temperatures well. So if you are somebody that lives somewhere where it's really warm, um, again, we've had some companies buy these and they've had reps in Arizona or other areas where it's really warm and they've left them in their car and the model kind of melts to some degree in, in that kind of heat because in your trunk, it can get up to 100, 120, 130 degrees very easily. So keep it under 100 degrees. Don't store it in your car, leave it in your house, leave it in your, if you're a rep or something like that. And if you're working at a school or a hospital, just leave it in one of the classrooms that's gonna be at a relatively consistent room temperature. That's gonna extend the life of it. Um, other than that, again, it comes in the light and the dark skin. Both models um, are gonna be the same from model to model. And actually across our product line right now, the various ultrasound models are all the same price point. That may change in the future, but right now they're all the same. And just a really good model to give people the ability to practice that hand-eye coordination. And again, ultrasound's not going anywhere. 
So this is a good model for them to practice. And then also move on to the more expensive models. If you're doing something like putting an IJ in and, and you wanna be able to practice that, those can be thousands of dollars for an insert. This one here, much, much less for the model. So you can maybe get some of your initial practice in here and then extend the life of that more expensive model by reducing the number of times it needs to be accessed. So if you have any questions, we will leave our website at the end of this video, as well as a link to the product page. Um, feel free to check that out. If there's anything there you have additional questions on, reach out to one of our team members and we'll be happy to help you out. Thank you very much. Thank you.